How sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me in the healing cleansing flood. church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I would like us to look into the book of Jonah this morning. Jonah, we would look at Jonah chapter 1 and, and we pray that the Lord will help us. Let us look into the book of Jonah. Jonah is still in the Old Testament. Jonah chapter 1. Chapter 1, we are going to read from verse 1. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible reads thus, 
Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Talk to us. In Jesus we have prayed. Amen. We are looking to, into the book of Jonah. Jonah is, uh, Bible students, what we'll call, is part of the literature of what is called by Bible students the, the minor prophets. And normally they are called the minor prophets not so much because their message is not important, but they are called the minor prophets because of the length of the books. And also, we also need to, to understand that Jonah is a, a prophet that is sent with what I can call the present message or the present truth for that particular time. God comes to Jonah with a message. If you read the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to Jonah, when you read that passage from the original language of the Old Testament, the English passage, the English translation, seem not to be ca capturing the message very well because the Bible says, and the and the word of the Lord came to Jonah, but in the Hebrew it gives a sense that says, and the word of the Lord happened to Jonah. That when the message of or the message or the word of the Lord happened to Jonah, it caused a reaction from the prophet. There is never a time God speaks to his people and nothing happens to his people. In this particular time, God talks to Jonah and sends Jonah to Nineveh. The Bible tells us that the people of Nineveh were so sinful to an extent that their sinfulness was even felt in the presence of the Lord. It is one writer who, who writes and says, the people of Nineveh were so sinful that they could also be compared to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah that would sit around and invent new forms of sin. They were, so, they were sinners so much that sin was always aligned to them that you could not speak about people of Nineveh without mentioning their sins. And the Bible says, Jonah, having heard the message, the Bible says, Jonah did not really want to go where God was sending him to go. The Bible says he, he, he stood up, he went to Joppa. From Joppa, instead of getting a, a, a trip to Nineveh where he has been sent, the Bible says Jonah took a trip and went to Tarshish. Now, I want us to note this, brothers and sisters. The Bible says, and Jonah paid his own fare. I don't want us to miss this. Jonah paid his own fare. He was sent to Nineveh, but he went to Tarshish. And those who, if you read the background, you discover that in, 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 in how it was calculated that Nineveh was 500 kilometers from Joppa and Tarshish was 1,000 kilometers from Joppa. It, mean, it meant that he paid a fare and went, went far from where he was sent. Let me say to all of us sitting here today that sin can take you far than you have expected. There, there are people who are romancing sin and there are people who, who think that sin or their sin will not find them out and later they pay not only with their health but also they pay with their families. Sin is expensive. The Bible says he went down from, from, from he went down from, he went to Joppa, and the Bible says he got down and went down to the, the, the ship. The Bible says as they were in the journey going to Tarshish, a storm arose, and as the storm arose, in those days they wanted to find out what might be the cause of the storm. The Bible says they cast out lots and the Bible says they all agreed that let every man pray to his own God. And they discovered that there was a man sleeping in the hind of the ship and they asked him, who are you? 
And the Bible says, Jonah says, I am a Hebrew of Hebrew. I fear the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. It's interesting that when he is discovered, he tells them his identity. But when he's running away from God, he does not tell them who he is. It is like all of us Christians, when we are in sin, we do not want to be known by our real identity. But when we are discovered, we are quick to remember who we are. The Bible says, they asked him, he said, I am a Hebrew of Hebrew. I, I worship the creator of the heavens and the earth. And the Bible says, Jonah asked them to take him and throw him into the water. And the Bible says they took Jonah and threw him into the water. And the Bible says that then there was a whale, a whale that came. And there is a story of a man who, who, who tried to, to, to preach about the story of, of, of Jonah. And, and, and he got confused as he was preaching. And he said, oh, I am not sure who swallowed the fish. It's either the, the fish swallowed Jonah or Jonah swallowed the fish. But we know that there was a certain of swallowing that happened. <laughs> but we, we, we know from this passage that Jonah was swallowed by the fish. Now, it is interesting that when Jonah left Joppa, he paid the fare. But when God went to look for Jonah, he had to take him back for free. When Jonah went, went to Tashish, he was in the water. But when God was taking him to the right direction, he did not go above the water, but he was transported submarine. God has a way, not only submarine. Jonah was transported to the place he was sent for free when he he paid his own fare. Salvation is for free. When we are running away from God, we pay, but when God comes back and looks for us, we don't pay anything. Hence the Apostle Paul says, whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. A story is told of a certain lady who was in a bus traveling from Johannesburg to Bulawayo. As he is in the bus, the, the story happens that this woman had a running tummy. He, he, she got sick as she could not hold herself. She went to the driver of the bus and says, Mr. Driver, sir, I, can you please, I want to go to the bathroom. Please help me because I have a running tummy. And the driver said to her, please wait for 15 more minutes. And he, she couldn't hold herself anymore and she, she sat down she stood up she sat down she stood up up until she was allowed to go to the bathroom but when she got to the bathroom to do the business that is done in the bathroom that i will not mention in the pulpit she she, she did the business that is done there but there was an accident that happened as she was there her purse her wallet that had her id that had money, fell into the chamber and got mixed with the stuff that was there. Please follow the preacher this morning. I want you to imagine, get to that situation with the preacher. Now, the, 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 the wallet is in the chamber and it is mixed with the stuff that is there. And we see this lady going down to that level, taking the wallet. She cannot leave the wallet because there is value attached to the wallet. She could have flushed the toilet, but she cannot leave it there because there is value attached to the wallet. She takes the wallet, she goes and washes it. And imagine with me, brothers and sisters, when Adam and Eve fell into sin, when men fell into sin, we've got kings like Manasseh, a man called Manasseh, who was the most sinful king in Israel. He was not only a sinful king in Israel, he was also the first wish to be recorded in the Bible. There is a man called Ahab in the Bible. He was the, one of the most evil kings in Israel. He also got married to Jezebel. Jezebel, a woman who was tormenting the church. There is a woman called Rahab, a famous prostitute in the city of Jericho. They were tainted and and, and, and they were painted by sin. But the Bible says, whilst we were still sinners, God could not leave us there. He had to leave heaven. Hence, John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and that life was the light of man. And verse 14 says, and the Word became flesh. 
and he dwelt amongst men. Imagine sinners as we are, we've got mem a member of the Godhead who came to our mess because he could not leave us in our mess. He came down to our mess so that he lifts us up and give us a new name. Imagine Jonah who is in the belly of the fish. Many theologians would say, Pastor, tell me, was Jonah alive when he was in the belly of the fish or not? I, I am here to tell you, I don't have an answer. But if Jonah was alive, I praise Jesus because Jesus is the one that sustained Jonah alive in the belly of the fish. If Jonah was, was dead, I still praise Jesus because it is the same Jesus who was able to resurrect Jonah from the belly of the fish. The Bible says from Nineveh, he pays the fare. Sin takes you far. Sin is expensive. If you are not careful, you will pay with your life. Sin is expensive. But when Christ comes to us, sin us as we are, he does not see us as we are, but he sees us as we, be, as we can become. When Christ looks at us, the law says men must die, but the grace of God says men cannot die because Jesus has paid it all at the cross of Calvary. I imagine Jonah going, when he went, he left, he went via the boat, but when he was taken back, he went back to the place where he was sent, submarine. I, 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 I imagine there is a story of a man who was known as a, as a thief. What he did best was to steal, and, and he was stealing sheep. Everywhere he go, he would steal sheep, and they got him in the community. They said, bring this man so that he would not steal again. They decided to brand him. And they, 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 they wrote an S that represent a sheep. Now people will remember that wherever he went, he was a sheep thief. And one day the, the, the sheep thief met Jesus, got baptized, and he became a preacher of righteousness. And as he preaches, people are looking at him. There is that visible S in his forehead. And a little girl who was sitting next to the mother says, Mama, what does that S in the pastor's forehead stand for? And the mother knew that the pastor was a thief. She was in trouble. She thought, what can I say to this girl? Because I can't say the pastor was a thief. And the mother says, that S, my sister or my daughter, represents the saint of God. She heard, that man had the evidence of sin, but God gave him a new name. I do not know where you are coming from. I am meeting you for the first time here, but what I know Jesus, even in these days, is still in the business of saving sinners. He is still in the business of giving us a new name. He is still in a business of allowing us to walk circumspectly, knowing that he is a God that gives us power to live without sinning through the grace of Jesus. I am here this morning to simply offer to you a Jesus that is able to take us and redirect our life into the right direction. I want to talk to those who are baptized today. I want to say to you, there was a time I was invited in a parliament in Limpopo. When I arrived, Limpopo is one of the provinces in South Africa. I arrived in the parliament and I arrived late. When I got to the parliament, it was packed in the parliament. Some people were parking outside, and I saw big cars, the, the, the Range Rovers, the Hammers, and I came with my small Adventist car, you know, small pastor's car. And, and, and the gate was locked, and I drove straight to the gate. They asked me by the police, sir, who are you? Then I said, I'm the pastor. Oh, pastor, we have been waiting for you. They opened the gate, and I drove my small red car, looking around, seeing those big cars, the Mercedes-Benz and the BMW, parked outside the gate. And I was ushered, and they showed me a parking next to the to the parking of the premier. Pastor, there is your parking. And I parked there and they opened the door. I felt like the big man in the city of Limpopo. They opened the door and mind you, Adventist pastors, they carry their own Bible. But that day there was a beautiful lady, I mean a seriously beautiful lady, that was sent and said, Pastor, I am here to carry your Bible. 
I was shocked, carrying my Bible. I gave her my Bible. She carried the Bible. And I walked with her. When we got to the door of the parliament, they said, the pastor is here. Everyone stood up. And I felt like I've arrived. I walked around looking at them. <laughs> I walked around looking at them. And walking towards the seat, they say, pastor, your seat is next to the seat of the MECs and the premiers. I tell you, I don't remember what I preached because I was overwhelmed. But what I remember, but what I remember is that I felt like I had made it to the table where few people make it. And when lunch came, an announcement was made. They said all the comrades and the members of parliament, they will eat that side. The MECs and the premier and the pastor, they will eat this way. And I went there. When I got there, I became so curious to know what they were eating. As we were eating, I ate so fast because I wanted to see the general people who were eating what they were eating. When I got them eating, lo and behold, I was surprised that even their menu was different from us. We were eating a more special menu because they were eating not so much sophisticated menu whilst we were eating serious menus. And I, that made me to realize that sameness does not suggest likeness. Sameness and likeness is not the same. When we come to the Then discover that all this time we were not the same, but we were just alike. I pray that allow Jesus to give you a different walk because you have been bought with the blood of Jesus. I remember when I grew up in Soweto, I was shocked that uh, I, uh, when I was in high school, I would walk straight like any other child. But later on, I discovered that the trousers were going even a bit lower and people were walking in a certain way. And I also wanted to be like them. But all this time I noticed that being like them is nothing because the Bible says we should, we should never be like them because we have been bought by the blood of Jesus. I want to say to you that you have been baptized and those that have long been baptized that some people will tell you that you see, you are only happy. You know, Adventists will tell you things when you get baptized. When you get baptized, you'll be so excited and others will say, no, just give him time. He will come down and become like all of us. Some will tell you that today you are excited but you will eventually come down. A story is told as we close. Let's close it this way. It's told of an, of an of a boy who was studying from a very far away place. When they were going to the school, they would use boats to the school. And they were using telegrams. And the old man sends a telegram and says, My son, when the schools close, do not wait for me in the new harbor, but go and wait for me in the old harbor. The boy listened to his father. He went to the old harbor. And the rain started to come. And people said, no, young man, you are in the wrong place. There is a new harbor where people stop. Go to the new harbor. The young man said, I will not go because my father said, I must wait in the old harbor. The rains came. The boy was soaked. He became dry. The winds blow. And he said, I will not go for my father said, I must wait in the old harbor. When people had given up, from a distance, he saw a flag that looked like a flag of his father's boat. And he started clapping hands and said to them, I told you that my father said I must wait in the old harbor. Let me say in these last days, the cross of Jesus, he died 2,000 years ago. The cross of Jesus is an old harbor that has power that is available even in these last days. Some will tell you that there is a new harbor. The spirit of prophecy is the old harbor. And it is the old harbor that never gets outdated. When they tell you that the spirit of prophecy is not important, I challenge you this, this morning that the spirit of prophecy is one of our landmarks. God is saying, stand 
stand in the old harbor. For the old harbor is safe than the new teachings that are coming in these days. They will tell you that go to the old harbor. The old harbor is that the new harbor. The new harbor is that kind of a theology that says we are saved by grace but without obedience. But the old harbor says life without obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Even in these last days, God is looking for men and women who will stay faithful to him, faithful to his teaching, and faithful to his word. This morning, I submit to you, no one else but the God of this Bible. And he is able to save and to save to the uttermost. I want to pray this evening, this morning. I've been preaching in the evening for a long time. I want to pray this morning. When we counted the people who were going to be baptized last night, there were 60 something. But today we baptized 50. And I, I am asking, where are the other guys that stood up last night? I want to make a call. The Pastor Kesesi will get into the water with his tie, he's ready. If you are here and you have not made a decision, what is holding you to be baptized? The water is still there. You came when people to be baptized were called, but in the morning you had a cold feet today. I still invite you before we pray that come to Jesus. Salvation is open and salvation is for free. Jesus has paid it all. Only if we come to him and give him a chance to transform our lives, I know he is able to change people's life. I have seen people's life change because of the power of the gospel of Jesus. If you are sitting here, you stood up, you wanted to be baptized probably in the morning, you were discouraged. There is a young lady who came to me last night and said, Pastor, I want to be baptized, but I'm afraid of what they will say at home. And I was glad when I saw her this morning being baptized. She was courageous enough to say that I will make that decision for Jesus. And if it is also your prayer to come forward and be baptized, the water is still there. It's waiting for you to be baptized. Jesus is giving you an opportunity to come to him and allow him to change your life and write a new story for you and change the entire course of your life. If he has changed my life, I know he is able to change. I, I, I know I'll tell people, if Jesus can do a great miracle for a guy from Soweto, from a guy like me, who is coming from the crime capital of the world, he can do it for you. I know he can do it for you. And he is here today to say, if you give him your life, he will do for you that which you can never be able to do for yourself. You made a decision to be baptized last night, but today when the baptism was done, you were not there, you were afraid. I'm giving you an opportunity to come to Jesus and give him a chance. Give Jesus a chance and see whether he will not be able to do for you what you have never been able to do for yourself. The pastor is going to come and pray for us, but we are still calling on you. We do not want to close you outside. I'm giving you a chance to come. A life in the absence of Jesus is not safe. Make it a point that you choose Jesus for yourself and make that decision for Jesus. Pastor, pray for us. We would like to pray but there is somebody who needs Jesus in their life today. Amen. We are requesting that you come. 
even if you are not ready for baptism today, yeah. we can still baptize you another day. Even tomorrow, even next week, we, we baptize anytime. The pool is ours, sure. the church is here. We invite you to come. Just come. We will <coughs> we invite you to come. Preachers are very patient. Sure. So we will wait until you gather enough courage and come. 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 If you need Jesus in your life, come. If you need baptism, come. Come. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Somebody has come. We are patient. We will wait. Come. Welcome, brother. Thank you. Come. God bless you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Come. God bless you so much. Come, come, come. Gather courage and come. Gather courage and come, come. <coughs> if you are not sure whether you need baptism or not, you are also welcome. Come, you come to Jesus. He will take care of that. Come. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you, I see you. Come. Thank you so much. Come, come. I, I like that song. Choristers, that, that song is good. Let's sing that song. When that song ends, we will pray and call it a day. While we are singing, we are singing because we are waiting for somebody to come. We are not just singing because we want to sing. No. It is our way of waiting. Giving you an opportunity to come. As we sing, take note we are waiting. As we sing, it's because we are waiting. Wh which number is that? Uh, 292. Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. God bless you. Into thyself. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus, I come to thee. Thank you, sister. Thank you. And full faith.
Thank you so much. God bless you, brethren. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, brother. I see you. God bless you. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of unrest. Out of unrest and arrogant pride. Jesus, I come. We are waiting. Jesus, I come into thy place. God bless you, sister. Welcome. Thank you. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of myself to dwell in thy love. Out of despair in raptures above. Thank you, sister. Upward for I own wings like a dove. Jesus, I come to thee. Hold it, hold it, hold it. This is now the last stanza, the last opportunity. Please, we are pleading. Don't let it pass you. Because next week is Holy Communion final exams, we go home. Don't miss the opportunity because we have no guarantee of next year and next semester. This is your opportunity. We are doing the last stanza and I will invite our education director from the division. He will pray. So please, as we do the last stanza, please come. Let's do the last stanza out of the fear and dread of the tomb. Let's sing. Out of the fear and dread of the tomb, Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. Invite to thy home, Jesus, I come. Out of the depth of ruin and toll, into the peace of sheltering fall. Thank you, thank you. Into the peace to be whole. Jesus, I come. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brethren, in our tradition, yeah. we normally finish worship at exactly midday, and it's midday. Yeah. But if you will allow me today, we do the same song, just one more stanza yes, for sir. somebody. Just one more stanza. Today we will break our three minutes. Just three minutes. We will still live here before ten minutes past midday. But let's take three more minutes sing one stanza and these people if they will be ready i will baptize on Amen. wednesday here in this church we will prepare them and on wednesday we will have a baptism so let's sing the first stanza again out of my bondage we are giving somebody a last chance one stanza and we pray Thank you. 
Thank you, sister. Thank you. God bless you. Jesus, I come. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. And into thy cell. Thank you, brother. I see you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. I see you, sister. I come to thank you brother I see you coming uh, thank you so much thank you we must always bring the call to an end at some point Amen. if anyone at any point feels that they need the savior we are available 24 hours 7 days a week May the Lord bless you so much. Thank you for responding to the Lord. And you are always welcome to respond to the Lord. Thank you. And may the Lord bless you so much. Uh, Dr. Mutero is going to lead us in prayer. I'm buying time because the chaplains' staff are still taking names and contacts here. Thank you so much. Thank you. The Lord bless you. We will all rise up. And after the prayer, you will remain standing until we finish our response song, then we can leave. Shall we reverently bow our heads as we seek the Lord in prayer? Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Amen. we have been blessed. And Lord, we would join David by saying that we were glad that we went into the Amen. house of the Lord. Amen. And Lord, we want to thank you for these young people who have given their lives Amen. to Jesus Christ. And Lord, we know that their lives will never be the same again. Amen. And so Lord, we want to commit them into your throne of grace and mercy that Lord, you may accept them, you may give them new hearts, Amen. you may be able to serve them into your kingdom. Amen. We want to thank you for the week of prayer. Amen. We want to thank you for the preacher who has come all the way from South Africa. We want to thank you for great things that are happening on this campus. And Lord, we know that this is the beginning of many, many, many great things Amen. that you are going to do for this great university. And Lord, we are, we are praying for salvation of all the students that Lord, as they get an education here, they will also prepare themselves for your soon coming. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we know that there are those who are still on the valley of decision. Lord, we ask this afternoon that you may not give them peace until they find peace in Jesus Christ. And so we pray for them. We ask the Holy Spirit to continue to bother them so that, Lord, they will be able to come to you. And, Lord, we want to thank you for the revival, the reformation, Amen. for great things that is happening in this congregation. And, Lord, we praise your name. And, Lord, we want to honor you. We want to uplift your name. And, Lord, we know that you are our Lord. You are our Savior. You are our Lock. You are our Redeemer. Amen. And so, Lord, we want to thank you because you have heard our prayers. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.